Let's get started with three surprising and fun tips to get your kid to open his mouth so you can look inside. Okay, well, as I was saying earlier, if you've got a kid who just clamps his mouth shut and is not gonna open it, as a speech pathologist, I've got about 45 minutes with each child, so I have a little time to gain their trust. And one of the first ways I start, if I've got a little bit of time, is I find a puppet, and my favorite is this one from Melissa and Doug. It's the, the Feed the Pelican puppet. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but it's basically this adorable pelican with this great big beak, and of course, his little pouch underneath to hold all the food. And when you feed him, so in this case, we're gonna feed him a crab, I let the kids feed the pelican, and look, it will drop right into his belly. Well, the beauty of something like this, and you could make your own puppet like this at home, you don't have to buy this one, but this happens to be my favorite, is that you can also use the throat scope to light up his mouth, but also to light up his belly. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, when you get your throat scope, now I love the lanyard that comes with it because I can wear it right around my neck, but you'll have the throat scope itself and then you'll have the depressor. And I want all of you to notice that this depressor is wrapped in plastic. The blades are single use only as they're FDA single use approved only. And we all know with a lot of germs floating around nowadays that we've got to be careful that we don't um, provide cross contact, not only for the safety of the child, but also frankly for us, especially with all the viruses, et cetera, on the news today. So I want y'all to remember that these are single use, but they're recyclable. And each one of these blades is essentially the same cost as a flavored tongue depressor. So really, really economical in that way. Now watch, here's where the magic happens. See how it lights up? Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of my plastic. And again, these are recyclable and biodegradable. And when I'm working with a little kiddo, and I'll let them have a turn with this because these are inexpensive enough that I could bring two or three. So if they happen to handle this or I happen to accidentally touch it, I can just pop another one on like that, no big deal. But I'll hold up my pelican and then they can use the lightsaber or the fairy wand to look inside and light up their mouth. But if you look right here, it actually will light up the belly too. Let me go in this way. I need my office to be a little darker for all of you to see, but you can really see how it illuminates. So try making one of these puppets at home or you can buy this one um, from Melissa and Doug. Then once the kids are getting really comfortable, I can say, do you wanna look in my mouth and see what's in my belly? What did I have for breakfast today? And I'll let them look inside. And of course, they can never tell. And I'm joking and saying, you can't see the pancakes because I had pancakes. And then I can pop on a fresh depressor and I can hopefully work my way to that little one's mouth and say, let me see what you had for breakfast today. One of the fun things is to ask mom or dad to clue you in as to what the little kid really ate for breakfast that day. And that way you could say, oh yeah, I can see those waffles. <laughs> like. How did you know I had waffles? Well, I can see them. So that takes a little bit of, a of time, but it's certainly a way to win that trust for a speech pathologist who has a little bit more time with a kiddo. All right, let's say that you're working with the child and they're still not quite warming up. So I brought my handy dandy child with me here tonight. And you can see, get a little pumpkin going. She's got quite the mouth there, but she's just, Clamp down, and worse, she's gonna turn away from you. She's gonna turn away from you. What do you do? You never wanna come and make a child turn toward you, that's not going to help, but you need them to turn and look at you in order to get a straight on view into their mouth. So one of the things I do as they're turning away is I keep stickers stuck to the side of my purse, just the little edge of it, and I'll reach down and I'll grab a sticker. Remember they're turned away and I'll either put it on my forehead or if I don't have bangs that day, I'll put it right here on my nose. And I'll just wait, just wait, <laughs> try not to laugh. Eventually they'll turn back away and <laughs> they'll see the sticker. 
you've got to put on your best Academy Award performance. Okay, everybody. And when they see the sticker, they will look right at you. Now's your chance to take a look in their mouth because they're busy looking at the sticker. I'm telling you, it works every time. Works every time. I've also put on a clown nose before. That works re really well too. But the trick is to keep these stickers sort of halfway stuck, like on your purse, like an edge, so that when you need it, you can grab it and stick it on your nose and surprise the kids in that way. Okay. Another little trick I want you guys to be aware of is that when a little kid opens their mouth, they sometimes will only open their mouth about like this, right? They're like, well, I'm gonna open, but not very wide. Well, I, I can get a decent look in there, but I really need to see more. Did you know that if you just take that sticker and have it up on the ceiling, I usually ask the parents to put something up there that the kid won't notice until I get there, if I know I've got a kiddo like this, or if you happen to work in an office or a clinic, Put a couple stickers up on the ceiling of your clinic room. What really work well are glow-in-the-dark stickers because then you can dim the lights so that you can still, of course, see in because it's illuminating. But now the sticker up on the ceiling will glow. So now, hang on one second, guys. There we go. Now what will happen is when the kiddo only opens this far, Okay, when they open, only open that far, you can say, oh, look up, look up, it's glowing, look up there, and they'll look up, and whenever a child looks up, they always open their mouth wider. So keep talking about the sticker, and you'll be able to, you don't even have to touch the child in their mouth, but you'll be able to illuminate their entire mouth with your throat scope until they're ready to take a break, and then you can try it again. So a sticker on the ceiling works wonders, works wonders. Okay, those are three tips, but I wanna give you an idea of more of a bonus tip when you think about you've only got a couple minutes and you have to look in their mouth, you just have to. Well, I always talk to parents about it in terms of road signs. If you've ever driven down the, the highway before and you've noticed the merge sign, the merge sign is the big yellow triangle with the arrow for the main traffic, but you're merging into the main traffic. That's the way I want you to think about entering a child's mouth too, as if you were merging into traffic. So here, let me show you. <laughs> she, this little pumpkin's got quite the pigtails. There we go. Okay, so little kids, when, you're, when you bring your traffic straight into their mouth, that can be really overwhelming. Instead, what we wanna do, and this is how I always instruct parent, is instead of following traffic straight into their mouth, merge into the traffic. So in other words, come from the side and come in this way, and you'll have much better success. You can even take the edge of the throat scope, and as you come in, the, in from the side, because you're merging into traffic, right? And you can keep it right over here on the inside of the cheek or the buccal cavity, we call it. And you can just turn a little bit and it'll illuminate without ever having to touch their tongue, which is what kids make kids gag the most. So just a couple ideas on how to help kids not only open their mouth, but also open their mouth a little bit wider using your throat scope. And don't forget to dim the lights because that does make a big, big difference. I'm gonna be taking some questions from all of you too. Let me put my pelican away here. <laughs> so if you have any questions about maybe a situation that's a little bit challenging to get into a child's mouth, or you have questions about um, picky eating, which is my specialty, whether you're a parent or a professional, or you just wanna talk about different ways to use the throat scope, let me know. And don't forget that we have a giveaway tonight. So, um, be sure to stay tuned for that as well. I hope I hope somebody here tonight wins that because it's pretty nice giveaway, pretty nice giveaway. All right, I'm gonna take just a second. I don't see any questions popping up yet, but there is about a 30 second delay. So um, I'm gonna give all of you a few minutes. Meanwhile, I wanna just chat with you a little bit about throat scope and 
some other ideas as to how you can use that. I actually have several videos on the My Munchbug Melanie Potok page that shows how you can use the throat scope in feeding therapy in order to help a child close their mouth and close their lips on a spoon and different techniques where I've learned to incorporate it into my daily practice, helping children learn to love a variety of foods. So it really, from my perspective, is not just a tool for illuminating the mouth. Anytime I can find a way to bring more fun into learning to bite, chew, and swallow a lot of different foods, I'm all for it. And I think, as I said earlier, it's one of the reasons that it's the only depressor that I use now. I don't even use a wooden one anymore. So I wanted to let you know about that. So check out those videos on the My Munchbug page. Let me see if I have any questions here. We've got Casey and Melissa's here from Florida. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca's in Canada. Um, Lori's tagging her friends. That is fantastic. Fantastic. Super. Well, you know what, everybody? Um, while I'm waiting for these questions to roll in, I wanted to mention just a few thoughts, too, because we are going to be looking in kids' mouths a lot, and a lot of parents are going to be looking in their mouths because, of course, we have... Um, some serious viruses going around right now. And when it comes to something like that, if you're not already familiar, I mean, it's been on the news a lot. The one thing I wanna stress for all of you when it comes to helping children stay healthy is to wash their hands twice, excuse me, to the tune of happy birthday twice. That's about 20 seconds. I was in a, a restroom the other day and it was a fairly new public restroom and I couldn't believe it. It was the cutest thing ever. They actually had the happy birthday song playing in the background so that the kids could go to their little sinks and they could wash their hands to the tune of the happy of happy birthday. And I just wanna to suggest to all of you that that's a great thing to start practicing with our kids right now. Before they eat, kids should always wash their hands. It's a great way to mark the beginning of the meal, but and it's also a nice sensory experience, but it also, of course, is important for hygiene. And if we teach them now to follow that good hygiene, they're gonna stay a lot healthier during this viral outbreak. So um, you've got your throat scope, so you're gonna be able to look in their mouth, but let's start with washing our hands. It's one of the simplest things we can do.